then we must have a professor emeritus. And that professor emeritus should be Wayne Clark, who I believe, if my math is correct, in January, once they switch over to the new group of people elected into office, will be the senior member of the West Virginia delegation. Is that accurate, Wayne? I will be the senior member of the Eastern Panhandle delegation. Yes, sir. Thank you all for having me on today. You're welcome. Uh, I can report that we're a little foggy down here in Charleston, but we do not have any rain. I think it's the only part of the state where it's not raining. You may be right. It's uh, It's been misting and drizzling here for seems forever. We're, we're lucky. I mean, the rain we're getting is nothing like they've seen in the Carolinas and other places. I mean, I, I feel so horrible for all of those people. Towns wiped out. We're getting rain. It's it's inconvenient. It's no fun. But, God, what's happening in some other places? When you poor people. had a drought, this is the kind of rain, the slow, mm-hmm. right? you know, soaking kind of rain. Yeah. It's not... It's not a thunderstorm that's kind of washing in and washing off real quick. Uh, this uh, this will help people who are on wells and, and such. It's our a, it's our water thing. table will be fine after this week. Wayne, uh, we have uh, this interesting combination of a special session called by the governor, which is closely followed by an interim session. Will most of you come home this week, or will most of you just stay down there? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, some have decided to stay and just make an extra week out of it. Me, personally, uh, my, my stuff is getting packed today and heading home. Uh, I have, obviously, I have campaigning to do. I have a, a fundraiser tonight over at Alfredo's at 630. I have a debate on Thursday uh, over at Shepherd University. So I have to I have to get back home, which – uh, Hey, that's what we signed up for. Yep. Uh, it's easy. We know we got to drive up and back uh, 79 all the way. Um, interesting fact, uh, since July, I put 8,000 miles on my car driving for uh, events and meetings for as, as a delegate. That's a lot of miles. That's a lot of gasoline, man. Yeah, and when, when your car takes the high-test stuff, that's expensive. <laughs> Very bougie of you, Wayne. Very bougie. So, what have you accomplished well, in your? To give my tax dollars back. <laughs> <laughs> what, what have you accomplished in your time in uh, in Charleston for this special session, Wayne? What have you folks done? So we had we had eight uh, bills that we actually passed yesterday in our votes. Uh, most of them uh, simple, easy appropriations, things that we had to do. Um, probably the most contentious of those was the uh, nuclear compact that uh, we had passed two years ago, which was taking uh, re- basically repealing the nuclear ban in the state of West Virginia. However, Senate never took it up. So and in last year, we didn't take that bill back up. So uh, in the 24 regular session, we didn't take a bill back up. So it was really good that we were able to get that on the call. Uh, get that passed. Yes, it was a little contentious, but um, it's something that we really need to to look at uh, for the future of you know base load uh, electric generation. So, how is that being received in West Virginia? Uh, mixed reviews, obviously. Um, uh, of course, your 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 coal folks are nope. Don't even don't even think about it. Uh, and other folks. You know, your areas where you have natural gas and, and nope, don't even think about it. And then you have uh, areas that don't have anything and they're like, OK, well, this is good. Now, the uh, two years ago, the bill passed uh, 94 to one. Uh, and yesterday it was 73, 18. I think if that's the call, correct. Uh, I don't have my notes in front of me, but I think it was 73 to 18. And most of the, the no's were folks from. Uh, the the southern area or coal uh, areas, but uh, yeah, I've I, I've had meetings with AEP and uh, Dominion Energy, and the nuclear is on the radar for the state of West Virginia in regards to what we're going to do in we uh, to maintain our energy dominance uh, in the country uh, to replace, and I'll say replace. Because we know that the federal government has a want to decommission coal-fired power plants 
by the year 2035, 2040. So we have to be proactive on how to maintain that base load that we've been known for to produce to the PGM network. And that next step, obviously, yeah, natural gas, of course, is there, but nuclear is one of the next steps. Matt Miller. So when you mentioned, you know, it's on the radar, is there anything specific kind of, you know, already the wheels are turning to, to bring nuclear to West Virginia? There are, yes, there are some companies that are uh, looking at it, uh, the site plan process for 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 a uh, new base load uh, uh, um, uh, uh, electric generator can take two to three years uh, just to get through the site plan that's even before you start building um, I, back in May I was on at a round table uh, in Morgantown with the uh, building trades Commission uh, talking about uh, nuclear plants uh, I don't know if you know, but we're talking about $13, $14 billion uh, to build and, and anywhere from 10 to 12 years to build, two to three years to get site plan. It's a long process. What makes it such a long process, just the various regulations that have to be met along the way? I, I would assume so. Uh, I, I know, as an example, because this came up in that uh, roundtable, that a, a, a renovation to a coal fire power plant uh, to you know clean up uh, emissions and do all the other stuff that can also take eight to ten years. So anything, any of construction of a base load uh, 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 power plant is in that realm of of time frame eight, nine, ten years out. So that doesn't seem realistic to the federal ideas and thoughts that you just expressed earlier that seem to be coming our way, saying, you know, we're going to try to get rid of coal-fired power plants by 2035. That, that does not seem realistic at all, based on what you just talked about. So with that, in, that one more time. No, I, I was just saying it just doesn't seem realistic when you talk about those um, amounts of times that it takes to, to, you know, even do something with a coal-fired plant, let alone add nuclear. Uh, and the federal government is thinking by 2035 we should be knocking all these, you know, coal-fired power plants out. That just does not seem realistic when you look at, at the, the – time frame that you just spoke of is west virginia now but by, by having this um ban repealed does it put west virginia in a spot better than say other states are are there a, a, a lot of states that allow uh, for nuclear and and we're just kind of joining in or are we becoming one of the few we're, we're becoming one of the few virginia's already already done it pennsylvania has done it uh i'm not sure about maryland um but uh, one of the things that's attractive is our, our location in regards to the PGM network. So their, their PGM network has certain rules. And, and we hear this a lot in, in our area um, when you're talking about any other uh, electric generation. Um, and that is electricity by rule travels east. So um, if Northern Virginia needs additional uh, uh, power, then anyone who wants to provide that needs to build that power generation west of Northern Virginia because it travels east. Now, there's no way of knowing where electricity travels once it gets on the grid, but it's by rule based off the PGM network is where they want the electric generation in. Uh, so in West Virginia, we are west of most of the power needs uh, on the East Coast, Baltimore, D.C., Northern Virginia, New Jersey, uh, Philadelphia. So we have the ability to build these and move them. Wayne, my question on that would be, um, looking at the solar issues in Jefferson County with the, the power, the, one of the complaints being that the power generated by these solar fields in Jefferson County is being sent to Northern Virginia, right? So, and the complaint is, you know, one, you know, we don't like the look of them. Uh, two, the long-term effects on the land. Uh, three, we're not even getting to use the power. 
How would it be received if we put nuclear in West Virginia and took that power and shipped it elsewhere? Well, here's the thing. The coal-fired power plants are, are doing exactly what the nuclear plant would be doing anyway. It's producing the, the electricity and sending it east according to the rules. Where it's going, it could be going west because you can't tell electricity which way to go. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're already doing that with the coal-fired power plants. Now, with the federal re regulations and decommissioning that's coming, all of your electric generators, you know, AP, Dominion, all that, they're looking at it, well, why are we going to put eight, nine billion dollars into a renovation of a coal fire power plant and then have it run if you know at total efficiency for a year and then we got to shut it down sure. they're not going to do that it, it doesn't make sense as a business model nope mr bodwell wayne i gotta i gotta say that the 2035 thing i think it sounds amazing it, it's it's wonderful it, it reminds me of summer before last when governor gavin newsom of the esteemed state of california that's in a state of disarray and financial ruin basically when he came out and said by 2030 all cars are going to be zero carbon they're we're going to have electric cars none of the no cars after 2030 sold in california are going to have be gas and then a week and a half later they had that big heat wave and he said okay nobody charge your cars during the day because the power grid can't handle it Absolutely. I mean, it, just stu Absolutely. stupidity on top of stupidity. Are we all in favor of the better mousetrap? Has the better mousetrap been what has won throughout human history? Yes. But the better mousetrap has to be built, has to function better, has to serve the purpose better than the current mousetrap before you can replace it. Absolutely. I agree a thousand percent. Was there a question there, John? No, I'm just opining. <laughs> That's what I do best. A Bodwell rant. Yes. You're just cranky because of traffic this morning. Well, hey, but I hey, but I got to tell you now, and this shout out to Mike Height. I now love traffic circles. They're great. Greatest thing ever. <laughs> greatest, greatest, greatest use of tax dollars ever. You don't have to stop. You just go around the circle. You just now. go around the circle. Wayne, what? Uh, Unless you get stuck in the middle. <laughs> yes. Was there anything that you hoped to get accomplished um, that did not get accomplished? Anything that you think you thought would have gotten accomplished that you guys weren't able to push across the finish line? There's my question for you, uh, Rob. Yes. Yesterday? Uh, no, no. We, would, we, we, we had caucused about what we were going to do yesterday, and we knew that we were going to refer um, a, a large amount of these over to finance. Uh, so, we got done what we wanted to get done. It, it's just painful that we had to um, come down here for a day and then go back and then come back down. Um, I, I, the, the, the governor could have waited uh, until and called us in on Sunday rather than calling us in for this Monday. Um, and we knew all the way back in the beginning of September when he made the initial uh, hints that he was going to call us in, that we were going to do exactly that. We were going to come in, run a few bills, recess until Sunday, and then come back. Wayne, we had Mike on yesterday, uh, Hornby, obviously the owner of this place and a member of the House of Delegates, and even used it in the open that it, it seemed like a waste of $35,000 a day, or maybe the cost is up to fifty now. He wasn't sure which it was. I know they used to always quote thirty five to bring everybody into Charleston for this when there was no consensus in advance that this would pass this 5% tax cut. And that really, I know, I know there was the, the money that had to be spent uh, or, or doesn't have to be spent, but could be spent that he's proposing over $400 million. But this uh, tax cut really was what everything else seemed to be dressed up around. And at no point along the way, since he proposed this extra 5%, have I heard or seen any consensus from the Senate that they would even take this up, let alone for members of the House. So I have to agree with Mike that I think that this was a waste of at least $35,000. Would you go as far as to say that as well? Uh, I Absolutely. And, and it's more than thirty five because we convened on Monday at 11. So anytime that we are in before 12, 
or after six. We get paid for the day before or the day after. Mm-hmm. So because we convened at 11 o'clock, he called the call for 11 o'clock. They paid us, taxpayers paid us for Sunday and Monday. So it's not 35, it's 70. Have you seen in your time, and I'm there, I know there aren't many special sessions called by a governor, but usually when one is called, it's called because there's already been consensus built between the Senate and the House outside of Charleston in their own communications, so that when you get there, you have a pretty good idea that you're going to pass the main thing you're being called to pass. Is that not true? Absolutely. Absolutely. Always. Always. When, it, when, when the governor wants to bring us in, uh, we already know, okay, this is what we're going to do. We've already seen the bills. We've vetted the bills. We've talked about them in a caucus. Uh, speaker and the Senate president have spoke. Uh, the two chairs of the committees have spoke from Senate and House, and everybody's on the same page. It might be a little tweak here and there, but we know it's going to get done. But you're absolutely right in what you said. We have no idea what Senate's going to do with this 5%. We, we know that we have built in, when we passed the tax cut, the $750 million tax cut, um, we had built in triggers every time we hit 250 million dollars in surplus that first amount of money went to buy down the tax rate by three percent that already happened in july now we want to add an additional five percent yay great let's do it however what we don't want to get into and we have to be careful if we just keep coming in here every time we have a surplus and extra buy down that rate what's going to happen next year with revenue when do we get do we keep balancing and keep having a surplus? We hope. But if we just willy-nilly just get rid of it, and then the next thing you know, uh-oh, we don't have enough money. we gotta cut. We got to start cutting things. That's what happened to Kentucky. When they got rid of their um, personal income tax, they never stopped spending money. And then all of a sudden they're like, uh-oh, what do we do? So then they had to do what we call like tax swap. Okay, well, we got to raise – sales tax or we got to raise soda tax or we got to raise the tax on gasoline to, to make up that difference so we don't want to be in that position and and that's one of the great things about the the initial bill that we passed and and you know i give eric carr uh senate uh finance chairman uh tons of kudos all the time for building in these automatic triggers that will eventually remove our personal income tax and will also protect the state for revenue generation so that if we have a bad year we're not chasing after our rainy day funds to pay to pay our salaries for our teachers or 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 do whatever we need to do so it it, it, it can be awkward now it comes in front of me absolutely i'm voting for it that's what everybody, I think, would say, because you don't want to go on record before an election voting down a tax cut if you are a Republican. That's going to kill you the next time that you run. That will show up in an ad, even if it's not the fiscally smart thing to do at this point, because there haven't been associated spending cuts to offset that. Or if you pass it, you can't give any raises to state employees next year. Right. Well, I can tell you the Democrats played a funny game yesterday, too. And uh, when we got to that specific bill and we were referring it over to finance, uh, um, Pushkin stood up and uh, asked for suspension of rules and have us vote on it at that moment. So we had a vote on whether or not to suspend the rules, and we all voted no to suspend the rules and refer it to committee. And he did that purposely. To show all of us, we vote, and he's going to push it and say, well, "All the Republicans voted on suspension of the rules for for the tax cut. Why?" So it, it, the game is is already afoot uh, uh, from the Democrats on, on, on this. Now, like I said, we want to refer it to committee, let let committees vet it, let Senate, let House vet it, do all that. But yeah, he played a game with us yesterday and put us all on the record of voting no for suspension of the rules on the 5% tax 
uh, tax cut. Mike is on later this morning at 9.35, by the way, as luck would have it. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll ask him about that. <laughs> hey, we'll. hey, Mike knows how the game's played. He's been around. Hey, I, I got a quick He's question. He's been around. Go on. I'm sorry. No, that's it. I got a quick question. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about. Um, Pete Rose, rest in peace. Who is now the greatest living ball player? I, I would like the opinion of a delegate. Who who do you feel is the greatest living ball player at this point? It's very important. It's, it's got to be Cal Ripken Jr. There you go. Uh, Rob, who's the greatest living ball player? That's an interesting selection that's there, Cal Ripken Jr. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good question. The Iron Man. The Iron Man. Well, it'd have to be someone who didn't take steroids, right? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> otherwise, Barry Bonds blur, uh, blocks everybody. Dylan, what do you think? Uh, Shohei Otani, still active, not a not a long enough still resume active. yet. Right. Fifty fifty yeah, and can pitch. I've ever seen. What about Ken Griffey Jr.? Couldn't, what about Mike fair. Trout? C- couldn't pitch. <laughs> yeah. Can't pitch. <laughs> Just gonna say, does it... Derek Jeter? Derek Jeter's in Jeter? that mix. Oh, Jeter definitely um, five five World Series, yeah. three thousand hits. Is yeah. it an everyday player? Because obviously Nolan Ryan has to be up there when you look at 27 years of pitching and the way 5, that he pitched. Strikeouts. Yeah. Then and if you're adding pitchers in, Mariano Rivera oh, has to be up yeah, there. Absolutely. How about yeah? But you you said you quickly dismissed the guy who can hit and pitch, Shohei Otani. <laughs> he just doesn't have a long enough resume yet. I don't know. You pull out a 50-50 year. That's enough. That's the resume right yeah. there. Dude. Yeah. Well, no. I got you. <laughs> you know. I'm it's not like going to argue uh, with how that. Mahomes doesn't have a full career yet, but I'm I'm ready and, to and at least put him top two. And yeah. thankfully, it was just Otani's manager, or whatever, who did the gambling and not him. So far yeah, as we, we know. know. <laughs> Wayne, thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Wade. All right, thank you, guys. All right, bye.